Hey guys, well it's been a long time since I've put up a video. Um, been dealing with a lot of work and also making some equipment changes that uh, have made me a little bit less eager to get out and do some imaging with my older equipment, uh, older imaging system than with the new one. So I bought a new telescope. This is the Explore Scientific uh, ED102 with the FCD100 glass. It uh, has a focal length of 714 millimeters as compared to my original system, the Celestron 9.25, which has a focal length of 2,350. Uh, previously, I had been doing imaging only with a one-shot color camera, the T2i, just a stock camera, not modified at all, uh, and had gotten some decent results with it. Uh, one of the problems I have, though, imaging here in Texas is that it's often warm and very frequently hot, and on those... Uh, days you can't do any imaging with a non-cooled camera you just just too much heat noise um, and so that was one of the frustrating things that led me to go down the route that many of you have which is to get this ZWO ASI 1600 monochrome pro camera with the uh, filter wheel and the... another advantage of going to a telescope like this with a wide wider field of view is that it gives me access to larger nebula as opposed to what I was primarily doing with the SCT was looking at planets and and uh, imaging planets and, and the galaxies, primarily galaxies. Uh, galaxies are really, for the most part, too small in the field of view of the 102 uh, for, for, the, for it to be used for that. But nebula are a good target, uh, expansive nebula with lots of good gas clouds. That would be, uh, that would be ideal for this. <clears throat> so it allows me to expand both the the uh, number of days that I can do some imaging here in Texas with a cooled camera and it expands my target list significantly. Um, a couple of things that I've noticed about the uh, this Explore Scientific uh, that I, I was sort of concerned about. I bought the uh, Explore Scientific plate which is uh, a, a Los Mandy style plate that matches up with the uh, saddle and the uh, C-Gem mount that I have. I had originally bought this Celestron plate, which is actually a very good plate in terms of its thickness, uh, additional holes for mounting other, uh, using it for other things. But the length of the plate covers up the focuser, which can be solved under certain circumstances, but it doesn't give you the flexibility of, of using or accessing the area around the focuser that the Explore Scientific plate does. Now, one thing, the Explore Scientific plate is thinner, so it doesn't sit down on the saddle plate of the uh, C-Gem and allow you to slide it into place for, for balancing, uh, as this plate does. Problem is, it is $84 versus the uh, Celestron plate that's $54. I was able to achieve balance, um, and I'll show you a little video of what that looks like here in a bit, but what you would have to do is to slide the tube relative to the bracket, or slide the bracket in the saddle. With a short plate like that, you don't have much flexibility to slide the plate. With this plate, you had a great deal of flexibility. Um, however, I was able to achieve balance, but I did have to remove the um, scope bracket, which I, I never use a finder scope anyway, so that's not that important to me. But here's what the balancing looked like. Okay, so here's the scope uh, on the uh, C-Gym mount. It is in its balanced configuration, so it's uh, possible to balance this system with, even though it has a short tube and a short plate, I can still achieve balance uh, fairly easily uh, with a bit to spare on either end. If I take off the deck clutch, you can see that we're fairly well balanced here. And if we loosen the right ascension clutch, we're balanced in that direction about that axis as well. So that's good. Another thing that uh, I'm looking forward to checking out with this system is the fact that it's a lighter weight system. The center of mass is also closer to the right ascension axis, which means I can get away with one counterweight, in this case the 11 pound counterweight that comes with the, the C-Gym. Also the system has a wider field of view, shorter focal length, which will also uh, makes it less susceptible to uh, guiding errors than a long focal length system. Second thing that I'm I'm going to have to learn is new software. The software I was using to you to manage and program the uh, T2i is Backyard EOS. It's an excellent piece of software. has a great user interface. I'm going to try out 
astrophotography tool for a while. See how that I've been playing around with it in the house and just doing some daytime imaging just to check out the camera, the functionality of the software. It's a very similar interface uh, to Backyard EOS, but I'll be uh, trying that out. I know many of you use Sequence Generator Pro, and who knows, I may end up gravitating to that uh, that piece of software eventually. I'm not sure. I think um, Astrophotography Tool is in the process of incorporating native drivers for the ZWO cameras. I tend to have a lot of a lot of those style cameras, so I'm looking forward to that. One of the issues, uh, another one of the issues that I have is this supporting or holding onto the camera with these three th uh, thumb screws and so the friction grip i'm a little concerned about that and the uh, the security of that here the connection is purely mechanical there's a connection directed to the bayonet mount for the camera and then it's threaded on at that end so it's a very good positive connection and i can reproduce that with this camera i bought the uh, canon interface um, adapter uh, for the ZWO, so this will screw on right onto the end of the filter wheel, and then the filter wheel camera assembly can be plugged into the uh, Smith Cassegrain just the way the current camera is now. So that'll be a nice positive mechanical connection. Here, I'm relying on friction. Now, there are a couple of options that may be available here, and uh, here's what they look like. I spoke with the uh, guys at High Point Scientific where I bought the telescope and asked them if they were aware of some sort of an adapter where you could uh, join your camera to the telescope in a much more secure way than the three thumb screws uh, in the uh, visual back that comes with the telescope. And one of the guys sent me to this uh, product line here from Bader Planetarium or on their website. And the idea is that this would screw into the telescope your imaging system would plug in here and then you twist this knob and it creates a friction connection but a much more uh, sound connection and much more uniformly distributed around the, uh, the two inch um, opening here. So it holds your camera very securely. So this is something I'm definitely going to look at. Now as it turns out of all the ones that they are featuring this is the one I need. It's the M68 internal thread uh, by 0.75 millimeters, and it goes with the hexafocuser on the Explore Scientific uh, telescope. So I'm hoping that, that this is the one that fits the threads on the extension tubes that come with the telescope. And if you go into their line here, the one that we're interested in is this guy right here. It's 37 millimeters long, which is basically exactly the same length as the extension tubes that come with the telescope, so that's good. So you could take off one of the extension tubes, screw this on the end, slip your camera in, and twist this knob, and now you have a much more secure uh, grip on the camera. So that certainly seems like a good option uh, when it comes out. Now, there's another one that I happen to find on the website, but it's on the Bresser website in Germany. Now, Bresser is a company that acquired Explore Scientific. I asked the folks at Explore Scientific whether I could buy this adapter from them. I'm going to go ahead and try to get one in to see if it, it actually fits the telescope. And if so, I'll probably get it. So the idea here is that the M68 thread around this perimeter will thread onto the end of the uh, extension rings that come with the telescope and then this m48 thread will mate up with the 16.5 spacer that comes with the camera or filter wheel that 16.5 spacer has the role of transitioning from a uh, t2 or m42 thread up to the m48 so i'll keep it and then it should just attach onto here and i'll have the same spacing that i currently have okay, another change that i'm making is to the guide camera. I used to use the ASI 120 monochrome for uh, my auto guiding through this 800 uh, millimeter, I'm sorry, 600 millimeter guide scope that Celestron has, and it worked fairly well. Uh, I have a off axis guider that I would love to be able to use and get rid of all that mass up there on, on top, uh, but I've been a little reluctant to go through the process of trying it out with this. A particular camera because it has such a small field of view and you take that small field of view and look through a focal a, a, an optical system with a focal length of 2350 millimeters and it's really you'll really be getting lucky to find a star i would think uh in that 
tiny, tiny field of view. I'm going to this guy camera, which is the ASI 174 Mini. Now this uh, sensor is about four and a half times the area of the sensor in the ASI 120, which means it'll see four and a half times more sky than the 120. It's mounted right now to this Orion 80 millimeter uh, tube uh, guide scope that has a focal length of 400 millimeters. And the Orion tube doesn't come with the extension necessary to get to uh, adequate back focus. So I've taken this extender that came with the Celestron tube or yeah, the guide scope and I'm using it here and it achieves uh, focus um, based on some imaging, I've just, not imaging, but some visualization I've done just out the window looking over a couple of streets at a slightly distant object. I'm expecting some good things with this guide camera. It uh, it has larger pixels, 5.8 micrometers versus 3.75 for the ASI 120. A wider field of view, as I mentioned, so I should be able to pair this with the off-axis guider with this system and hopefully uh, take it, get rid of this high weight on top here, and that would be great, especially when I move to connecting this system onto here and have that added weight, and then uh, I would love to be able to eliminate the weight on top because right now I'm, my two counterweight counterweights are at the bottom of the counterweight bar just with the system I have, so anything I'm adding is pushing the limits there a little bit. This system is also uh, in focus based on using the adapters that came with either the camera or the filter wheel. Uh, and I'm about mid-range of the focus travel, so I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get to uh, focus on the deep sky objects. In fact, I may even be able to remove one of the, the uh, adapters inside here. But the main thing I want to do is get rid of that, that plate. Well, that's all for now. There'll be a few more of these videos coming along, and eventually, who knows, maybe even some imaging. Talk to you guys later.